everyone, I'm Helene and a great big welcome to Cabin Fever Crochet for our Pine Cone Fall Festival. I've joined together with two of my YouTube friends, Tom from The Needling Hooker and Jay at Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam for our very first cow and cow crochet and knit along that begins woohoo! right now. So excited and hope you are too. I want to take just a few minutes to go over and explain how this works and then I'm going to get into the tutorial. I know it's a little bit longer of one but it's a really fun designer type of hat made easy and I go through that step by step with you. Okay so how this works is we all Myself, Tom, and Jay all have the same theme, pine cone theme. And so our job was to draw from that inspiration of the pine cone, take a stitch, and come up with a special project for you. So each of us will have our own unique design, and that gives you three different projects, including knit and crochet for and from both male and females, and on various skill levels. Does that sound fun? We think so too. And what's exciting for us is even though each of us know which project we are working, we don't know what it's going to look like yet. So one surprise for everyone after another. And then our tutorials are one week apart with mine starting today. Tom is up next, next Sunday on October 17th. And then Jay on Sunday, October 24th, bringing it all together. The links to both Jay and Tom's channel in the comment section down below and the description box, along with links to any other mentions and any other information that I tell you about along the way, so you always have that reference, okay? And I want to give a special thanks. First, I wanna thank all of you, my fiber friends and family for being here, your continued support, being part of my channel and watching my videos. Appreciate that and each and every one of you so very much. And if you haven't already, I'd like to ask to please consider subscribing, like, share, comment if you would like to. Love all of your comments and especially today if you would let each of us know what you think of our collaboration, how you like it, how you like the format. And uh, we would, it would help us a lot and we would really appreciate that. And also please click that notification bell so you will be reminded of all my future uploads here at Cabin Fever Crochet and beyond. All right, and one other very special thanks is of course to Jay and Tom for all of your creative ideas and time putting this together. So we really hope that you're as excited as we are bringing this to you. And speaking of excitement, Tom has some wonderful news that he's going to share with you during his tutorial of a longtime dream that he is following. We are so happy for Tom and wish him all the best and hope you will too. And I've also included the link below to his Endeavor channel as well. Okay, so now let's get into today's project. So this hat, this hat, as you saw on the, the beginning photos and the screen, if you read my little notes down below, I made it really easy for you. It's customizable. It's also reversible and convertible. It's worked from the bottom up. And this created a wonderful medallion at the top, as you saw in the photo. And I'm calling this my little baby pine cone medallion where it starts from the tree and the pine cones expand out when they start out real little and they grow and grow and grow until they fall off in the fall. And I've listed the timestamp in the description box and I also have the metric conversions throughout. The cuffed beanie to slouchy hat is super easy to do. I give you the changes as we go along. And all you do is you fold the band down 
slide it a little farther back on your head, wherever you like it to fit, and adjust the folds how you like those. Um, let's see, reversible, yes, and just show that to you real quickly. And now I've turned it, and then you can see how just as nice that looks, and even the top section. A little bit of a different look, but it still worked out great and just as clean and just as lovely. Okay, so now it's time to get started. I'm going to go over with you the supplies, my suggested yarn and hook sizes. You will need two stitch markers, either a row counter if you have one, or a pen, piece of paper to keep track, especially when you get up to your decrease rounds, most importantly there. And a tape measure if you have one. It isn't necessary, but if you want to remake it that way, you have your numbers. You will also need two hook sizes, one for the main body of your work and the beginning band, and another for the decrease rounds and this changes a little bit for the cuffed beanie to slouchy hat and I'll explain that part when we get there also. Now as far as yarn goes, best worked within a medium yarn range. For the slouchy you want something that is more lightly spun open airy very soft and drapey to get that drape because if you use a stiff or coarse yarn that's how your hat is going to turn out. The beanie is more flexible with the type of yarns that you use because it has the one shape that fits the contours and curves of your head. The yarn that I am working in today is the Lion Brand, their basic stitch anti-pilling yarn, and I'm combining with their skein tones. Both the exact same yarn the anti-pilling has the exact same amount, 185 yards, 170 meters. So I did test both an H and an I, and I am going to go with an H on this. So you might want to do a test swatch. You can do simply, oh, maybe 8, 10 double crochets. See how that looks. Be sure the stitches aren't too tight or aren't too far apart. We are working in multiples of three, and that is one, two, three stitches, one, two, three, three, three. So whatever your total number is that goes around your head will divide equally by three. Okay, so for example, um, between the ranges of yarn and head sizes that I gave you, your number will be somewhere either 54, 57, 60, 63. And how you measure this to go around your head, you're not doing the circumference like you do for a top-down beanie, but you are going to measure how you wear a hat. Okay. So you will measure Going around, when you do your foundation double crochet, you will fit that around your head to where you like that to land, below your ear, and where you like that to come on your forehead. And you're going to work these foundation double crochets to where the two ends just meet together and fit comfortably around your head without over stretching because these post stitches are going to take up some slack and they make the band a little bit smaller than your foundation double crochet. So if it's real snug to start with that foundation double crochet, it's going to get too tight when you start working the actual stitches. For the foundation double crochet, I'm going to work this first and then when you get to your number I'm going to show you the band options that you have. Alright, so begin by chaining two. It's a little bit different of how this is traditionally worked. This is how I work mine and especially for this project. Okay, yarn over, go back into the first chain working into the back bump. So there's the front of it where you have the V. 
All right, you roll it over and that raised bump in the center, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. The foundation double crochet, we are building our chain in our double crochet in one. And always bring up that loop to the height of the other loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first, and that is your chain. Now we're going to complete for a double crochet like you normally do. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So your chain for now is across the top and your double crochet stitches are on the bottom. All right. Again, repeat yarn over and you see these two loops just below the loop on your hook and the stitches just below that are all part of your double crochet. And here is your first chain. So you want to go back to that first chain, insert your hook through both of those top loops, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through the first loop, there is another chain. Now yarn over again, finish your double crochet, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. If you need to borrow that stitch marker for just a few minutes till you get the hang of it, and put the stitch marker right into that chain after you make it to help you out, you can certainly do that. Yarn over, insert your hook through both loops of the chain, yarn over, pull through. Now to make the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. This is where you can pop stitch marker in if you need to. Okay. Now do your double crochet, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you keep repeating this over and over. And these first two beginning chains, by the way, do not count as a stitch. So go ahead, Finish your foundation double crochet and I'll do mine and I will meet you there. Okay, I've completed mine of 6060 foundation double crochets. Now holding your foundation double crochet row with still your loop that was on your hook at the bottom. Okay, now Bring that out a little bit so you don't lose it and just roll your work over so now the loop is on top Okay, and now your stitches are on top and your chain is on the bottom and this is the wrong side or the inside of your work and this is the right side or the outside of your work and you are going to Bring that end down, grab the other end, and make sure this is straight. There are no twists at all in your work. Bring the other end around with your beginning tail, and now that should be on the bottom of your work. Bring those two sides together, and make sure your working end is on the outside of your work and doesn't get hung up in the center. Okay. And now you can connect and now this is the outside and the right side of your work now facing you. All right, insert your hook back into the loop, slip stitch to the top of that very first double crochet and again remember those first two chains do not count as a stitch. All right, so insert through both loops, draw your yarn and slip stitch through to the other side. And again, I always double check and make sure that there are no twists in my work. You can take one of your stitch markers and connect the two sides and I do that just for my first couple of rounds and then they're securely connected. I don't accidentally wind up uh, with this side turning and then getting a twist in my work by doing that. So I just go through both loops of the first stitch on the right and through both loops first stitch on the left. Alright, so now you have 
two ways that you can do the band all with the same number. Option A and B. For option A, which is two front post double crochets followed by one back post. Two, one, two, one is the sequence. Or the reverse order of that which is one double crochet followed by two back posts. One, two, one, two. That is option B. Okay, so I am going to work band option A. We are going to chain two to begin. And again, these two chains do not count as a stitch. And the first two beginning chains of that foundation double crochet are just below, so don't accidentally work in that. So we are going to work one front post double crochet. I hope you know how to work these. Insert your hook front to back, not into the top of the double crochet and not below, but right in that space in between. Go around the back of the stitch and up from back to front. Yarn over and complete your double crochet and remember to pull up that first loop on your hook to the height of the other loops on your hook. Alright, and now another front post double crochet followed by one back post double crochet. Work now from back to front around the top and front to back. And as the two sides fold in towards each other. I just hold those after I complete that first part of my stitch to help keep from dropping a loop from losing that. Okay, And again, one front post double crochet in each of the next two, or around each of the next two double crochet, and one back post double crochet around the next double crochet. And again, one more time, work two front posts, double crochet, followed by one back post, double crochet. Two front post, double crochets, one back post, and the next. So that is your repeat all the way around. I'm going to finish this round and I will meet you back at the end, show you how we connect and carry on. And we, after this round, we're going to repeat this two more times for a total of three post stitch rounds for the band. I am back around at the end of round one of our band. So I counted the foundation double crochet by itself. All right, so now we're beginning round two. Ah, here we go, row counter. There we go, now we're in business. Row two of our band. And I always, you know, before I connect, I double check, make sure my sequence is correct all the way around to be sure I haven't made any mistakes along the way. Okay, again, skip those two beginning chains and you can take out your stitch marker if you like. We're going to use that little bit later on because these two sides will stay together and you know sometimes actually I will go through my two loops on one side and I'll just bring that tail in through and then yarn over pull up a loop and just kind of leave that hang out there until I go to sew that together, which I just do at the end. You can do it now if you want, or you can wait until you're finished at the end, too. All right, <clears throat> so go to your beginning front post double crochet and slip stitch, ignoring those two chains. All right, slip stitch to join and again chain two and I cinch those down a little bit and as we work those get pushed to the back those two chains and they become a lot more seamless okay and then now we're just going to yarn over and work a front post double crochet around that first front post double crochet and a front post around the next 
and then back post double crochet around the back post double crochet. And that is a sequence you repeat all the way around. One front post double crochet around the next two front post double crochets. One back post double crochet around the back post double crochet. And of course if you are working option B then you just follow what you did there. So instead you would reverse that order. You work one front post around the front post, one back post around the next two back posts, and so on. Okay, so I am going to finish this round, and then when you get around to the beginning, or to the end, come around, you finish round two, then you connect just as we did here, and then you repeat this round two that we're on one more time. Okay, so you just slip stitch to the top of your front post double crochet, chain two, and then begin again. Alright, so I'm going to see you at the end of round three of our post stitches. Okay, I am back around at the end of round three of our band and your band should measure between one and a half to two inches in height. The average will be one and three quarter inches or that would be between three and a half to five centimeters and no higher than that. Okay, I mean if you're a tiny bit over then that's fine but not by a large amount because then when your hat grows the height of it is going to wind up being longer. Okay, so I am going to switch colors and go with the honey color now. So you go ahead, slip stitch to again the top of your first front post double crochet and stay with the same hook size unless you are working the slouchy hat the convertible, rather cuffed beanie, to slouchy. Okay, and then you will go up one hook size. That's one difference and one other small difference which I will tell you when we get there. Alright, now you either chain three which will count as your first double crochet or work an alternate double crochet. And that is what I am going to do. I like the look and the finish of that. There are several ways to work it. For this particular hat, this is how I like to because it most resembles the beginning double crochet. So I'm going to draw and I'm going to show this to you one time and if you want to do it and watch it again then just rewind. You draw up the loop to the height of a double crochet, turn the hook upside down and get a good hold. I hold with my thumb, that loop on the hook. You turn the hook upside down and you go around the back of the loop on your hook. Okay, you insert your hook into the top of the double front post double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through that first loop and around the back of the loop on your hook that you're holding and now you can let go. Yarn over and then you pull through the last two and that is your first double crochet. Now these are the stitches separating a little only because I hadn't tied these off yet. Okay, I'm just make a little square knot right over left, left over right to secure that. Okay, so then now You've either chained three or made the alternate double crochet. Now into that same very first stitch, you're going to work another double crochet, chain two, single crochet, all into that same stitch. And you will skip the next two stitches and into the next you work two double crochets, chain two, and one single crochet all into that same stitch. 
and that is going to be your repeat all the way around. Skip the next two and work this sequence, the little pine cone stitch with the two double crochet, chain two, and one single crochet all into that same stitch. Skip the next two and repeat with two double crochet, chain two, single crochet all into that stitch and you repeat this all the way around. This is your setup round and then the next round will be our one round repeat all the way throughout the pattern until where we decrease and then we're going to change it up again. Okay, so one more time. Skip the next two stitches and into the next you will place two double crochets, two chains, and one single crochet. So you repeat this sequence all the way around and then when you get to the end I will meet you there and finish that and connect with you. Show you how we connect, turn, and continue on. I am back around at the end of our setup round one of our pattern. Alright, so now I am down to my last repeat. Right, so I skip two and I work my sequence, same sequence in the next. Alright, my chain two, my single crochet, and then I skip two, the last two, and then I'm going to slip stitch to the top of the alternate double crochet or the top of the chain three. Okay. So on your alternate double crochet it tends to just kind of smush down a little bit. So separate that from your next double crochet and go into the first loop and not that middle one. So that's part of the stitch and then the back loop. So it's a front and back loop just like you have a front and back loop of your regular double crochets. And I worked that one ah, a little bit tight and my fingernail broke that I use as a tool but <laughs> it's a little harder getting into but anyway there you go. Okay so you slip stitch to join and then now we are going to turn our work and we're still working in the round but we are working back and forth in the rows and that's what gives this lovely pine cone texture that I mentioned at the beginning. Alright, so turn the work. We're going to skip that beginning single crochet and then now slip stitch into the chain to space. And I recommend marking your work at the beginning of each row. So again, you either chain three or you work an alternate double crochet now in two that chain two space. Then work a second double crochet and your chain two and single crochet goes all into the chain two space. And we're just going to work into the chain two spaces all the way around. So you skip the next two double crochet and skip that single crochet. So now remember you're on the reverse side so you're working backwards, your stitches are backwards. So instead of usual how the top of your stitch is a little bit angled to the right because we're working on the reverse side, now the top of your stitch is a little bit angled to the left. Okay. So you skip the double crochet, skip the first single, and then work all those stitches into the chain two space. So your two double crochets, your chain two and your single crochet. And that's your repeat, your one row repeat all the way around, two double crochet, chain two, single crochet, all into each 
chain two space all the way around. Okay, I'll meet you at the beginning. We'll connect one more time and that is your repeat. I'll let you know for how many rounds to go and then we'll finish off and then we just begin our decreases. It's as easy as that. Okay, so I will see you back around at the end of our round two. I'm back at the end of round two, which is our repeat round. Take the stitch marker out and now again we are going to slip stitch to your beginning chain three or alternate double crochet. And as we did before, we are going to turn the work, skip the beginning single crochet, slip stitch into that chain two space, and then work another your chain three or your alternate double crochet, and repeat the pattern. Another double crochet, two chains, oops, and a single crochet. I recommend then you place that stitch marker back in and if you are working the alternate this is a good time actually to more define that front and that back loop so when you come back around it's a little easier to put that in. Okay. And then that's your repeat pattern. That's it all the way around. Okay, just like we did on round two. Your two double crochet, chain two, single crochet, and every chain two space all the way around. And you just repeat round two over and over, making sure when you slip stitch and you turn your work back and forth after each round. Get a color that you can really see. Put your stitch marker in on the right side of your work, somewhere at the bottom, or if you use a piece of yarn for your stitch marker, whatever it is, that's fine as long as you can see it and that it doesn't slip through to the other side to mark the right side of your work because that will be important when we get to a portion in our decrease section. Sizing variations in this type of yarn that I've described for these ladies average size you work seven rounds of the pattern including our beginning setup rounds. You can either count them as you go with the row counter, you can just count up from the little center holes that they make however you want to do it to keep track. You work seven rounds for size small, work six rounds, and if you have an extra large, a longer head, then you would work eight rounds. Okay, so size small six, this average seven, extra large, work eight. To give you a frame of reference, the sizing I've based these measurements from is a lady's average head height of eight inches from the center top of your crown all the way down to the bottom of your ear. And if you are working the convertible cuffed beanie to slouchy hat for all sizes, you will work the pattern as I just explained with the sizes and the rounds and then you just add an extra two to three rounds or whatever is equal in height to that of your band. Approximate, it doesn't have to be exact, it can be a little bit over a little bit under, but not by a whole lot. If you work it to where it's an entire extra height or more of a round, then just know that that's going to make that slouch even fuller and even longer, but that's just a good general guide to go by. Okay, well I'm going to continue working mine and I am working the regular beanie, so I will see you for the ladies average at the end of round seven and then we're going to work the decreases the same for everyone. Okay, 
Have fun, and I will see you there. And here I am. I have completed my seven rounds of our repeat pattern, the body of our hat. That worked up in hardly any time at all. And now we will begin our decrease. First, I want to give you some measurements where you should be approximately in the height of your hat for the three sizes that I mentioned, the average, the small, and then the extra large or extra long head. Give or take a little bit, doesn't have to be exact. And if you need to adjust, if you are under or too far above, you can take out or add at this point, okay? So I am measuring from the very top peak of our pine cone down to the very bottom of our base from where we began, right on the edge there, okay? So for the ladies average where I worked the seven rounds, you should be at or around five and a half inches or 13.97 centimeters high and I happen to be exactly on that point, okay? So for ladies size small, where you worked six rounds, you should be at approximately five inches high or 12.7 centimeters. And for an extra large, longer head, where you worked eight rounds, then you should be at about six inches or 15.24 centimeters. Now if you had to add or omit a round right here, if you have to do that, then it may land you when you finish and begin the decrease either on the right or wrong side of your work and that's okay. It will not affect your work at this point forward as lo long as you are still alternating between the right and the wrong side working back and forth as we have been with each round. Except for the last four rounds, those are worked on the right side only all sizes, both hat versions, and I will show you what we do as we get there. And that is the import importance of marking the right side of your work. I would move that stitch marker up wherever you finish the height of your work. And it is the last four rounds of the decrease where we work that right side only, where we are also going to go down one hook size. Okay, so for this portion of the decrease from rounds one through four, stay with the same hook size that you have been working with all along for the body of your hat. And now get your second stitch marker and I want you to use that to place into the beginning the first stitch of each round as you're working back and forth because the more we decrease, the smaller the stitches are going to get and they're going to get harder to see, especially the last couple few rounds. So you will need that stitch marker for that, okay? So as always, we slip stitch to the beginning. You're going to turn. So this is round one, round one of our decrease, okay? We're going to skip the beginning single crochet, slip stitch into the chain two space, right? and again work either your chain three or your alternate double crochet. Now work another double crochet. Remember to put your stitch marker back into the first stitch, okay? And instead of chaining two, we're just going to chain one and single crochet. That's a decrease. And we're going to skip over as we have been the two double crochet and the single crochet and into the next chain two space we will repeat this first sequence with two double crochets, chain one, and one single crochet. And that is what you're going to work into every chain two space all the way around. And I will meet you back 
at the end of round one. I'm at the end of round one of our decrease section. Now we begin round two. Okay, again you will slip stitch to that beginning chain three or alternate double crochet turn your work skip that beginning single crochet and slip stitch into the chain one space again chain three or work an alternate double crochet and now double crochet and one single crochet. No chains this time. Okay. Skip over all the way to the next chain one space. Skipping the two double crochets and the single crochet and into the chain one space. Work two double crochets and one single crochet all into that chain one space and that is what you're going to repeat all the way around. Okay, over to the chain one space and it's going to get a little bit tighter and harder to see but it is there. Okay, in between the first single crochet and the double crochet. You will work two double crochets and one single crochet. I will see you back around at the end of decrease round two. Here I am at the end of round two and these rounds are going to start going really fast now and we will begin round three. Slip stitch into that beginning chain three or alternate double crochet and turn your work and now we're going to slip stitch into that first single crochet, chain three or alternate, into the same stitch, and chain one, single crochet into the same stitch. That kind of acts as almost like a half of a decrease, which it really needed to bridge the gap so that as we decrease in the next round our spaces aren't too far apart and they and tug and stretch the stitches out below. So this worked out really nicely and this is going to be our repeat all the way around. Okay, you will skip the next two double crochet and then into the next single crochet you will work a double crochet, chain one, single crochet. Skip the two double crochets and into the next single. This is your sequence of one double crochet, chain one, single crochet. And that's what you're going to work in every single crochet all the way around. And I will meet you back woo, at the end of round three of our decrease. And now I am at the end of round three of our decrease rounds. And you can see it's starting to curve. Your side should be pulling in now. And now we're going to begin round four. Okay. And next round we're going to go down a hook size. All right. So last round with the same hook we've been using for the body of the work. All right. So again, slip stitch to the top of your alternate double crochet or your chain three and turn. And now we're going to skip the beginning single crochet and then slip stitch into that little chain one space. 
So we're going to skip the single and slip stitch into that chain one space. And then chain three or alternate double crochet. And then now single crochet. And that's all you will do into each chain one space all the way around. So you are going to skip the double crochet and that is the stitch that jogs to the left. That double crochet corresponds here because as the work shrinks it's going to angle even a little more due to the nature of using the stitches at two different heights. So just know that this little stitch to the left is part of the double crochet. Alright, and then there's your single crochet. So we're going to skip the double, skip the single, and work in between into the chain one space. See, now that I have separated those a little bit, hopefully you can see that they're more defined how this double crochet angles off to the left. Okay. So you're working in between the double and the single in that chain one space. We'll work one double crochet and one single crochet. Make sure your stitches are coming down flush with the top of your work. All right. So again, skip the next double crochet and the single crochet and work into the chain one space. One double crochet, one single crochet. That's what you will do all the way around in each chain one space. I will see you back around at the end of round four. Now moving on to round five. Woo, on the home stretch of our decreases. You're going to go down a hook size now. So for those of you who worked the slouchy hat, you started in the smaller of your two hooks for the band. Then you went up one size for the body of your work to get the fullness. Now you will go back down to your original beginning size hook, the smaller of the two. And for those working the beanie, you just simply go down one hook size. So I worked this as mentioned in the five millimeter H hook. Now I'm going down to four millimeter G hook. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you needed to add or omit a round to get to the height size that you needed, depending on which version and type of yarn you're using, you may either be on the right or the wrong side of the work. You need to get to the right side of your work, and that's what we're going to stay on for the remainder of our hat. So if you're on the wrong side of your work, just slip stitch to that beginning stitch and turn to the right side. And if you're on the right side, then we'll just continue on by slip stitching to that beginning first stitch, which is the double crochet. Okay. And then we're going to chain one and a half double crochet in the same beginning stitch. Okay. And half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. So half double crochet in every double, half crochet in every single, and make sure your stitches are nice and flush. Okay. Go ahead and work this round. One half double crochet in every stitch. Oops, that's round five. Haha, <laughs> and I'll see you at the end of round five. I'm at the end of round five. Okay, take out that stitch marker. These are so easy. Okay, slip stitch to your beginning half double crochet. And now we will begin around six. Okay. 
chain one, half double crochet again in that very same beginning stitch, skip the next and half double crochet in the next. Keep that down flush. Remember to pop that stitch marker back in. And now all we're going to do, we're going to skip the next, half double crochet in the next, and work one half double crochet in every other stitch all the way around. You can see how our work is really drawing in and we have two more rounds to go after this. Now to begin round 7, remove your stitch marker, slip stitch to your beginning half double crochet, chain 1, single crochet now in that same beginning stitch, and place one single crochet in every stitch around. Get that stitch marker back in because they're getting smaller and smaller your stitches and harder to see where your beginning is. Okay, so sit on this one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And that little hole at the top is really closing and with our last round there will be a very very small amount that you will cinch in and so closed which I will do with you. Remove the stitch marker, finish up with round 8, last decrease round slip stitch to that beginning single crochet chain one single crochet in that same beginning stitch and now we're going to single crochet in every other just like we did with the half double crochet in every other just skip the next single crochet in the next, put the stitch marker back in your first please, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next and that's what you do, every other stitch, single crochet all the way around, and one stitch left and I'm going to skip that last stitch and slip stitch back to my beginning single crochet now I have a tiny, tiny, tiny little hole at the top. Can you see that? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Before you cut your yarn, oops, I got snagged a little bit. I can feel that. So before you cut your yarn, I would definitely try that on your head for size, even if you're giving it to someone else. Definitely still leave that stitch marker up on the right side and just so that you know that was where your last round was in the body of the hat. Just in case for some reason something went awry and you need to pull back to that point you know just where you stopped. Okay, And I'm going to cut my yarn, leave enough of a tail to sew in that little circle and really be able to you know, neatly, cleanly weave in your ends. Doesn't have to be reversible, but as mentioned it is. So if you sew that in very carefully and neatly you will not see any seam, you know, or anything. And rather than do a yarn over and pull through and make a knot, which leaves a little lump and knot at the top. I'm just going to pull the yarn through and work a basting stitch in and out around that circle from there. Grab yourself a yarn needle that works good with your yarn. Okay, 
And then I am still, I'm going to mark, I'm going to take a little circular stitch marker. I'm going to insert that into my last stitch. Okay, and then into the next, I'm going to go from front to back. And the next, go in from back to front. Okay front to back and then the next back to front you can do one or two stitches at a time or a few at a time main thing is when you go to close it at the end do not over tighten be gentle okay so front to back back to front going through both the front and back loop and being careful not to catch other stitches. Here I am back to the beginning again and then you can just gently just pull that closed and you can just kind of wiggle your yarn a little bit if you feel like you over tighten that and give that another little pull. Okay and if you need to you can go through maybe eat the top loop or you know, another, another stitch or two after that to close that up. Don't need to necessarily go all the way around. I might just go through a couple. And then I'm going to go then down to the back on the inside of my work. Bring my yarn needle through. And then finish just by weaving in my ends and that's where I go real carefully just I just pick a stitch here and there and try not to go back through in the same place if you can help it so you don't want to create extra bulk and stiffness at the top at the circle so I just I just move it around and when you finish that if you do find that this little bit of stiffness don't overstretch or tug or fray your yarn but you can just work those stitches a little bit they will loosen up and soften okay you can take your stitch marker out and then join the bottom together if you haven't already and I'm going to take that little slip knot out that I did and show you real quick here how I do mine for a really nice seamless join okay so now I'm going to go over this is our first stitch here where that beginning chain 2 is so I'm going to go over to the last stitch which was the back post double crochet and go front to back and insert my needle through both loops and I pull that little knot through okay and you see how it, it did pull those beginning chain twos even more to the back now now I'm going to bring my needle through the stitch that corresponds with my very first front post double crochet not the chain two this little bitty stitch here but the first full stitch bring it through to the front side and you see when I tuck that in even more so brings those two together and now I'm going to go back over one more time that back post I'm going to go through front to back just to lock that in even more okay and then now you just as usual go to the back and start weaving weaving in your ends I make sure that I don't accidentally catch my yarn on the front where it's going to be visible okay and just sew in as usual however you do that okay so now here's the finished look that pretty <laughs> and there it is on the inside too I just think that turned out so cute. That'd look great 
either way, pom-pom or not, however you adorn it, decorate it, or leave it plain. And I like the cuffed version just as much. Okay, well that's a wrap for this time around. I truly hope you love this pattern, this hat, all the different options that I gave you. And until next time, have fun, happy creating, and I will see you soon.